Okay, I believe we're back. So I will be working on the section that I normally do with my paper here. So I'll generate three random numbers. The first one is 12, which is a forklift. The second number is 25, which is twinkle. And the third number is 18, which is leathery. Uh, we're having some interesting ones uh, in these past few uh, sections. So uh, let's just start with the basis. We'll get the forklift going. So we'll get um, our forklift. And so it's going to have the little wheels in the front and then the cab and Um, trying to get a good mental picture of a forklift. Okay, so I know that it has larger tires in the back, just in terms of of weight compensation. That is not an eyeball, by the way. Um, so I will go ahead. Actually, I can probably color these in. Get some gray. Okay, and then we we know that they have the arms, so we get this lift, and then so this is the the basic idea of a forklift. We have um, now this is a two dimensional drawing. That is not what I wanted. Um, so obviously we are not seeing the fork aspect, but I would like you to imagine that there is another side to this fork over on the other side, um, assuming that we have a third axis going through the screen. So uh, I can probably color this, uh, the rest of this here with my yellow, um, just color it in for good measure. So. Bam. And we'll get this going. Okay, so we have our forklift and um, so our other words, I'm, I'm starting to uh, get a little lost for what I want to work these in with, but I will just go with the basis for now. So possibly, uh, we'll just throw some ideas out. Possibly the forklift could be lifting something that is leathery and twinkly. Um, so I'm not sure what necessarily would be both leathery and twinkling. Um, but then uh, per perhaps some studded chaps. Um, so we can have a... Uh, let, let's go with that. So we'll grab our brown here. And we're going to get a cardboard box to start out. And it's going to have our opening. And like that. And then I will color some stuff in here. So we have this cardboard box. And it's got, um, it's got our before mentioned chaps in them. There are a large quantity of, uh, of chaps in here. And so we have, uh, this whole supply of, of leather goodness. And obviously we have to, uh, we have to touch these up because they are quite the fashion statement. They need to be done justice. Um, I'm just going to make this more paint friendly. Okay, so we have this box of chaps, and we can write chaps on it. And obviously, if this is the payload, uh, the driver will probably be someone who is interested in them. Oh, uh, we can't forget about the sparkles. So these are twinkly. And 
they are projecting light outwards off of their reflective bedazzled surfaces. Um, just like any good pair of chaps would. So then we uh, will need to have our driver here. So uh, obviously if he's driving we need some mechanisms here and then we'll get some handles there and we'll start the process of drawing the driver. So um, this is nothing like the environment project driver. This driver will have less computers and also less clothes, I would imagine. Um, so we'll have our normal uh, biker jacket man, sleeveless. Um, that's that's going to be a little close to the roof for his comfort, so we'll start over. And we'll get the jacket going. And then um, this is going to be his arm. And that is a interesting arm, but I'm sure the ladies love it. That's all that matters. And we'll give him a black leather hat. And also, we're going to color this in once we get the chance. But at the moment, I'm not doing that. Okay, so obviously he's bringing these chaps to some sort of uh, leather convention. And uh, the sheer quantity of the chaps required that he needed a um, a forklift just because uh, obviously forklifts can lift a little bit more than uh, the average human uh, I did not know uh, I, I don't know if you knew that but this is a common knowledge idea um, nope I still didn't fix that did I so if we have the uh, if we have this man driving this forklift forward, then he will have a momentum, and this momentum can be represented by a vector whenever I get around to drawing the vector and stop adding more aspects to this picture. So this vector can be represented um, anywhere in space because vectors are not dependent on their origin. So let's say that this is his momentum. Um, and obviously it is a large momentum because the forklift itself weighs a lot. And, oh, actually it has a lot of mass, sorry. And the box of chaps, obviously if it is needed, if a forklift is needed to lift this box, then it must be uh, relatively massive itself. So we will assume that he has this uh, this momentum um, mv, which m is the sum of the mass of the forklift plus that's not a k that's an f plus the mass of the chaps and uh, also any other mass that's included perhaps um, the mass of the driver uh, we can do that and this velocity will all be the same due to the fact that they are all one body at the moment um, but I'm sure that the chaps will be connected to many other bodies later. Um, hopefully they will be on. And um, we can leave the mental picture at that. Um, but also, uh, 
he will be moving forward through time, which we can consider in this direction. If we so choose, um, this would assume that this is a two-dimensional space where uh, the x-axis is in this direction, the y-axis is in this direction, and the time axis is in this direction, and we could imagine that maybe the z-axis is in this direction, um, but it's a little hard to conceptualize a fourth-dimensional coordinate system in a two-dimensional visualization. So that's why I was saying it would be easier to represent um, this idea by naming space as a two-dimensional um, plane and having time orthogonal to or normal to that plane. Uh, now, time would be normal to all three of the axes, but this is hard to grasp in our normal sense of geometry, so um, I will not attempt to draw that any more complex and correctly. So uh, I believe that we have a nice picture here, and um, I will leave the picture here, uh, but I want to thank you guys for watching.